What's good my roadies? Randy the REI Rockstar here. Today's training video I'm going to talk about marketing in terms of where you should send your direct mail and possibly even where you can place your bandit signs. I'm a real estate investor out here in Phoenix, Arizona, but I want you to customize it to this to whatever market you're in. So by the way, if you don't already know about me, check out the blog. Lots of free content on there on how to flip real estate and make money. Many of the techniques are no money down and a lot of good stuff there, including a gig bag where I give you $327 worth of stuff, things that I've developed over the years, and I'm just going to give it to you for free just for joining up the uh, newsletter. So check that out when you can. Let's get into this training. And by the way, grab a notepad because it's about to get real technical. So um, if you don't already know about Realtor.com, um, you know, go there. And in fact, uh, use the link underneath the uh, description in the description of the video because it's research.realtor.com. If you just go to realtor.com, you're not going to find that link. Believe me, I tried. So research.realtor.com. Do it now. Step number two is you want to make a couple notes here. So you're going to note the average days on market across the U.S. Uh, is 68 days. Now, what does that mean? That means from the time something went on the market to the time it went under contract, which means that the seller accepted the buyer's offer. So that's about three months and eight days on average. And every market's different. There are times where it can go to 120 days or it may be 28 days, so in a hot market. So you need to find out what your local market is doing, the market you selected, or maybe just do, if you haven't done the research, just do the market you live in already. I believe uh, this website looks at the top 1,000 um, markets. So I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm going to select Phoenix. And notice the difference is that uh, nationally in um, the states, things are going for 260000 list price average. But here in Arizona, things are a little bit higher. It's a very attractive area to live in the country, so that's why. Now, key note, asterisk here, do not focus on zip codes that are above 320. The reason should be clear. Those are areas that you're going to have a tough time finding a buyer for. How difficult is it for somebody, ask yourself this question, would you be able to right now get a loan above $300,000 for a personal residence? Probably not. Um, most folks don't have a credit score that would, that would tie into getting approved for a loan for that amount. So as investors, we're going to play the other card, which is we're going to focus on zip codes below 320000 That's going to be our low-hanging fruit. So write that down. That's, that's uh, very important here. And then you can see for the county, it's much different. Things cl close a little bit faster. In this case, things um, go under contract a little bit faster. But we want the broken down data for each zip code so that we can select on what zip codes to market to. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to select this little red button here. It says download full data. Once this loads up here, you're going to select this zip code level. And when you click this, be sure to select somewhere, it, you, depending on the computer you have, it's going to ask you where to save it. Um, if you don't know how to change that in your um, browser, if you have Firefox or Chrome, it's in your settings. Um, it's right here. And you can actually uh, tell the browser where to save your files. Um, for most people, that's going to go to the downloads folder. So I've already done that here to save us time. So here it is here. Um, I have my stuff going to the desktop. And if I open this file up, you can see here is all the data. Now it's a lot of data. I'll be really honest with you. You don't need any most of this stuff, 90% of it. So you need to find out your particular county's data. And the way to do that is just think about the US. You know, the way they've broken up the zip codes here in the States is back east things start with zero zip codes. As they move through New York, it's in the ones. Down in the you know, southeast, it's Florida and Georgia. Those are the threes. And then it moves across to Texas, the sevens. Uh, Illinois, where I'm originally from, is the sixes. And then Arizona, where I'm at now, eight, 90210 out in California. So what you're going to do is you're going to select this B here, this column B, and you're going to do a sort. And that's going to put everything in order. You want to sort smallest to largest. And then you want to definitely make sure that it expands to all the other areas. It should only take a second. Now I've already done that here and you can see it's all in order. So I know that our zip codes start with 85001. So I suggest you do the same rather than scroll through all this stuff. Um, we're actually going to delete a lot of data right here is just click anywhere you'd like hit control F 
Follow along here, pause the video if you have to. I'm gonna hit 85003, because I know that's in Arizona. And it's gonna take me right here. Look at that, actually, it's the first one. What do you know? So, all this other stuff above this, so I, I need this data piece here, but I don't need this line. And I certainly, I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna scroll up and I don't need anything else back here. Now this is gonna take a moment. I mean, literally it's gonna take about 60 seconds to a minute and a half for you to get rid of all this data. Now what we're eventually gonna do, I'll, sh I'll give you a, uh, kind of a, just I'm just gonna delete it. I'm just gonna delete that data. You see that? I just went up, I let go, I went up and I hit this delete button. You're gonna do the same. So I'm gonna do this again. I don't need Alabama data and all this other stuff in Florida. Now we're gonna do the same for data underneath it. So give that a moment. All right, and I wanna keep this top line here. So make sure you're not deleting line number one, delete. All right, now we're left with Phoenix, Arizona and other areas in Arizona. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this bottom area here, which is New Mexico zip codes. All right, same deal. I don't even need this last line here. Boom. All right, does your sheet look like mine? Well, at least in terms of uh, less data, it should. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of year over year and month over month data. So you'll notice a lot of these fields have this M and M and this Y and Y. Anything that says that, delete it. Now, just for sake of doing this work, guys, go ahead and save this sheet. Um, click the save button, because if it's on your desktop, it's been named, it'll look something like this. Just hit save so that you don't have to start all over if something goes awry. Um, and then start deleting anything with M and M, Y and Y, very easy to do, just click it like that. You wanna get rid of this footnote here, delete that. And just keep expanding, I'm just double clicking on these areas. Here's a Y and Y and an M and M field. And the reason we don't need that data is it's not important to us with respect to what's going on right now. We don't need the month over month or the year to year for anything. All right, so this is definitely gonna be worth it when this is done, trust me. Here's another year to year and month to month. We do not need that. Year to year, month to month here. Bye. Pending count, this pending listing count, I'm gonna delete this as well. And guys, I'll actually put what should be left in the description as well. That, that I think will be very helpful for you. Here's two here, bye. Total listing count. I don't need this pending ratio. At all. The year to year, the month to month, or the original pending ratio is gone. I don't need the price increase count or the price decrease count. So it's starting to look a lot better, isn't it? In fact, I'll probably go across this line here, highlight that just by bolding it. All right, so we have the month, uh, two months ago actually, February 2017, we have all the zip codes. The median list price for these areas the active listing count, the days on market, the new listing count, that's not important, delete that. All right, so here's that average listing price and median list price I was telling you about earlier. Um, total listing count here. Okay, so this is this is all looking great. 
So active listing and total listing, it looks like it's one and the same. So get rid of total listing. And now we're good. All right, so you should have month, zip code, zip name, which is essentially the city, median list price, the active listing count, the days on market, market rather, and the average list price. Now, you really could use either or guys for this next step, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look at the average listing price and I'm gonna sort this to get rid of what? The 320,000 and above area. We don't want that. We don't want 320 and above. So I'm gonna select this column here. It may be something different on yours. Um, if it's column H or I or F or E, you've done something wrong. You should only have one, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh column should be this average listing price. If you've done something wrong, just that's fine. Go back and watch the video. But I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna select sort. Sort smallest to largest. Oops. And it's going to ask me to expand the selection. Yes, that's good. All right. All right. So all you have to do is notice I'm just looking at this area here. And I'm looking at anything 320 or above. There it is right here. So I'm gonna get rid of all these zip codes. Guys, every time you're doing this, by the way, although although very tedious, um, you're saving money. You're saving money on this direct mail for irresponsive you know, zip codes that aren't going to respond to uh, your marketing. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the cities, so I'm going to select this city here, and I'm going to do by, again, A to Z. And I want you guys just to think about neighborhoods and cities that people live in that might be like retirement communities or that may be outside of the, let's call it metropolitan area. So for us um, here in Phoenix, not many people want to live in Apache Junction. It's just not a desired area, nor Arizona City. Um, especially if you're from out of town, most people who come here want to live in a nice suburb like Avondale, Chandler, and Gilbert, and things like that. Um, so I want you to take a moment to get rid of these areas that you know for sure, just aside from being an investor, that are not desired neighborhoods. So I'm going to get rid of Apache Junction, Arizona City, Ash Fork. I don't even know where that is, so therefore it's uh, not going to be on our list. I'm going to get rid of Bisbee, Bisbee and Buckeye. Now, Buckeye, it, it was a neighborhood that came up, um, a city, if you will, um, out west. And um, right now in, in Arizona, um, a lot of investors have come back into town. So that's why we don't focus on these, these zip codes out there. And they're all new builds. So we want areas with equity, not something that's built five years ago. So we got a couple of other ones here that we're not lichen now chances are you know arizona in this part of maricopa county tons of cities tons of of uh population out here so you guys are probably already done so i'm gonna delete this here and since my list is a little big i'm gonna save you guys some time i'm actually gonna put this on pause and i'm gonna come right back remember this step is getting rid of areas that you know are outside of your metropolitan area for example tucson that's two hours south i'm gonna get rid of this stuff and i'll be i'll be right back all right, there we go. So I've got one more here that I'm going to delete. Littlefield, Arizona. All right, and here we go. So, you know, your list may be smaller, but we have uh, average list price under 320000 and we have only the neighborhoods that are within the met metropolitan area. So here's another step here, guys. So we're going to go to Days on Market. We're going to select this. For me, it's uh, column number F. And we're going to use sort filter, smallest to largest, with the smallest being the most 
popular neighborhood for days on market. So right now in Arizona, a, re a really great place to invest in, at least right now in February 2017, is El Mirage, Arizona. Now, let me tell you why. Um, if I just if I said this a year ago to um, just the average person or investor, they're gonna they're gonna probably laugh a little bit, going, "What what what are you talking about, El Mirage? You know, why would I want to live in El Mirage?" Um, you have to understand what's happening in our particular market. It was we there's not a lot of inventory, and um, it's still pretty challenging for folks to get loans. So El Mirage may not be the most attractive part of town, but it's where there's inventory. It's where there's houses that are new builds that are on the market that people actually like, uh huh, and you know they can get loans for it. I mean, look at this purchase price. It's 176,000. It's virtually half, or this list price, virtually almost half of the Maricopa County average. So this would be a great zip code to target. This 85335. Combine that with your cash transaction zip codes that you've done. And that, again, that training video is on YouTube, guys. Go take take a look at that. That's a three-part series that helps you locate an area and, and breaks it down by um, cash uh, transactions where investors are buying. Combine this list with that and you're good to go. Now, what's cool about this is you can actually take this um, and let's say you just wanted the top 10 zip codes. These are all actually pretty good, but we don't want Mayor Arizona though. But let's just say you um, had a list source person, somebody who can get you lists. Well, you can go ahead and send them, you know, these zip codes here and say, hey, listen, I want absentee owners for these areas. I want probate leads for these areas. I would like, uh, you know, inheritance leads for these areas, death certificate leads for these areas. And they're going to come back to you and they're going to give you a lead count and say, well, here's the list. Here's about how many I have. They're all from the last six months. It's $218. But it's $218 well spent because you know that when you get a property, it's going to fly off the shelves. So that's the trick, guys, is that when investors are you know, sending out this direct mail, they want the best chance possible for somebody to respond to that marketing. And if they get the best list, combine that with a good mail piece, um, and fortunes in the follow-up, you want to hit this particular zip code several times for whatever list you bought in that zip code. If you just want to focus on one, that's great. You can literally, you know, take a look at these top 20, compare it to the top 20 cash transactions, and pick the winners between those two. You're golden. So I hope you enjoy this training video. Don't forget to floss, guys. That's tag, you know, follow, like, opt in. Uh, share and subscribe. I would definitely appreciate that. And talk to me in the comments. If you have any questions about this process, go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. It's Randy, the REI Rockstar, checking out. Have yourself a blessed day. 